But as you see from the tail, we have not one, not two, but three different astronomical events you can view this month and even this week. Now, the first one's going to be the next full moon, that's the Sturgeon moon, and it's considered a super moon since the moon is still fairly close to the Earth, though that will be moving further away as we head into autumn. Now, it'll be full on the night of the 11th through the 12th of this month, and it gets us in the Sturgeon moon from a fish in the Great Lakes of Sturgeon. They're most plentiful this time of year, and with most of these names, this is a uh, Native American name. I'm not going to give details on how to view it since everybody knows how to look at the moon. It's pretty obvious in the sky. Now, the second thing is going to be the Perseid meteor shower, usually the best one of the year. And it's going to be seen all month, and it peaks on the 11th and the 12th, which, unfortunately, if you saw my last slide, you asked the full moon, and the full moon's going to be up all night pretty much, so it's not going to be as good a show as last year. You should still see the brighter meteors, but the dim ones are going to be hard to see. Now, how to view this? Get away from light pollution, get away from cities. This is Wyoming. That will not be a problem here, as most of you know. Also, allow about 20 minutes for your eyes to adjust to the darkness. You should begin to see more stars as you stay out there longer. And look to the north and northeast. Most of these will originate from the constellation Perseus, hence the name uh, Perseid Meteor Showers. It's common sense there. And if possible during this year, try to get behind an object to block the light from the moon if you can get behind, say, a building or a rock or some kind of an object. You should be able to see more meteors than if you're standing out in the open. And the last thing it's going to be Saturday in opposition. That occurs on the night of the 14th, which is Saturday. Now, you ask me, Chris, what the heck does opposition mean in regards to astronomy? Well, basically, just imagine that objects are opposite each other, in which case, Saturday lined up with the um, sun and the earth. Basically, picture on the earth, the sun's behind me, and Saturn's right here. Now, you're asking me, why the heck is this important? Well, the reason is, for viewing the objects, usually the closest to the earth, so it'll appear the largest, and number two, it'll be up the entire night, since the rise and set, and set of it pretty much coincides with uh, dawn and dusk. So how do you view this? It'll rise in the southeastern sky around dark. It's about 9 p.m. This during this time of year. It'll gradually move across the sky. It'll set to the southwest around 5.30, again, right around dawn. And if you can't tell the difference between uh, planets and uh, stars, it's pretty easy if you look, at, look up at them. Main reason is planets don't twinkle, stars do. That'll be the big thing. You know, it'll appear orange, obviously. And if you want to take a pic, you want to look at it, you want to see the rings, you can't see that with the naked eye, unfortunately. You either need a telescope or a really strong camera lens. Now, here's a picture of Saturn I took a couple of years ago. You can see the outline of it, but even it's not very clearly defined. This is my camera lens here. It's a pretty good lens. This is about 600 millimeters. So if you have a really strong camera lens, but especially if you have a telescope, though, you should be able to see some of the rings on this. Happy stargazing, everybody.